What's going on guys? Back again for another video. Just a quick warning. My little teddy bear Shih Tzu. I don't think you can see him back there. Here he goes. Just stole my Rottweiler's prime rib bone. So there might be a dog fight and there it goes. There might be a dog fight behind me, but I'm going to try and get through this either way. Sitting here at the bar, drinking a cold, bud heavy, and putting some names in the calendar. Got a lot of people booking up. January is almost filled, and I got a lot of people booking into February and March. So if you're looking to come fishing with me on any of those dates, uh, definitely give me a call sooner than later. And that's kind of how I wanted to start the video out, um, by just saying thank you. Thank you to everybody who has picked up the phone and contacted me in either way and uh you know book trips with me i'm grateful for every customer i get and uh you know it means the world especially with uh us expecting the little one come april taking all i can get so uh real quick i wanted to uh thought it'd be a good time to sit down and film a little video that answers a question that i get asked on literally every single fishing trip i'm on and people ask this question in different ways uh they ask it at different times some people ask me before they leave their deposit as soon as they contact me to book a date and some people ask me an hour or two out on the water. And really what it comes down to is people just kind of want to know my backstory. Um, like I said, the people that want to know it right away, a lot of people want to know they're not, you know, they want to know how and why I started guiding, how long I started guiding, am I a native Floridian, uh, how long have I been fishing Lake Okeechobee, things like that. And it's more or less, they just want to know they're getting in the boat with someone who knows what the hell they're doing. Uh, and then I get asked by a lot of people out on the boat, how I started guiding, what made me want to start guiding, how long I've been fishing, Things like that. So I thought it'd just be a good idea just to kind of uh, fill you guys in on kind of my my backstory, how I got involved in this whole thing. And uh, some of you might find it boring. Some of you might not want to watch it, and I totally understand. But some of you guys or gals might, uh, you know, might pique your interest. So real quick, you know, kind of started out, I'm going to be 30 years old come February of 2022. And I'm born and raised in Florida. I am a Florida or native Floridian. And uh, for those of you that don't know, a lot of people think I was born and raised out here uh, near the shores of Lake Okeechobee, but I was actually born on the coast and lived there for 28 years in a town called Deerfield Beach. Uh, if you're familiar with Boca Raton and Fort Lauderdale, I'm right between the two, and I was literally born and lived a half a mile from the beach. So the ocean was right in my backyard, uh, but you know, I've, I've been fishing since I was four years old, and my dad got me into it at that time, and he's a bass guy. He's red shad worm or die, that's it. He could care less about anything in the ocean. So growing up, all I did was bass fish. That's all I really knew, that's all I was into. And I fell in love with it right away. You know, going back to grade school, kindergarten, first grade, I had to wake up 15, 20 minutes before I had to leave for school, you know, earlier, wake up 20 minutes earlier just so I could fish in my swimming pool every morning. And uh, that's all I did. And then my dad would take me bass fishing either out in the Everglades or out here on Lake Okeechobee every weekend. And then Sundays he was stuck around the house doing yard work and whatnot. And I would literally watch the same shows I'm sure a lot of you watch, Roland Martin, Jimmy Houston, Hank Parker, the Bass Masters. And I had my rod and reel in my hand on the couch and would reel in my stuffed fish pillow during commercials. I mean, I was ate up with it. And uh, that's really all I did. You know, every weekend, uh, my, my dad and my brother would alternate in taking me fishing. Uh, again, bass fishing. Everglades Holiday Park, um, Loxahatchee Wildlife Preserve was a big one. That was only 10 miles from my house. And uh, in the wintertime, we fished a lot here on the south end of Lake Okeechobee. We stayed at the Torrey Island Campground. It would tent and camp for the weekend, and it was all, you know, awesome. And, uh, you know, the older I got... Uh, I, I just, that's still, like I said, all I wanted to do, it's all I knew, wasn't really into sports very much because when I was playing sports, if the opportunity arose to go fishing on a game day, I was going and coaches don't seem to like that. So fishing was really all I did. And then I got to the age where, you know, I was probably 10, 11 years old and I was old enough and my brother entered me into the Broward County Junior Anglers Club. Uh, some of you watching this may have participated in that. I don't even know if it's around anymore, but basically you got in a 12 foot John boat with a trolling motor with an adult and you fished a tournament against 25, 30 other kids and all these little lakes around Broward County, Quiet Waters Park, Trade Winds Park, things like that. And um, it was my first tournaments I ever participated in. My brother got me involved in it. My dad was never a tournament fisherman and still isn't, could care less about it. Um, but my brother, you know, he 
he liked fishing tournaments here and there. So he entered me in there so I could start competing in these things. And, uh, you know, I, I fell in love with it. I love the com competitive aspect of, uh, of bass fishing and I uh, love the whole game and obviously still do today. So that's what kind of got me started in doing that. And uh, like I said, I mean, shout out to my brother and my dad who alternated during the tournaments because it was nine hours of you driving around this stupid little tiller trolling motor in a John boat in the cold, not being able to fish, not being able to net a fish, not being able to do anything. They just had to make sure I didn't kill myself in the boat. So that's how I started. And um, I fished that, tur that tournament trail for probably, well, for till I was 17 or 18, I believe. And, uh, you know, as I got more involved in it, involved in it, um, you know, I was probably 14 when uh, my brother entered me and him in my first real bass tournament, I'd call it. Uh, he had a 22-foot storm at the time, was fishing tournaments out in the Everglades. And I'll never forget, I, I, he picked me up, I fell asleep, drove, the, you know, drove the whole way there, asleep in the front seat like I often did. And then uh, I remember him waking me up, boat was unhooked, ready to go. He, I jumped in his boat. And uh, I remember him backing me in at Holiday Park and thinking this was going to be another 10, 15 boat tournament like I'm used to. And I remember turning the key on his boat to back it off the trailer. When I turned around, there were 90 boats in this basin with nav lights on in the dark. And I about had a heart attack. And uh, <clears throat> that was it. I was hooked from that. Before we even made a cast that day, I was hooked on tournament fishing. And uh, I remember going out and catching a 20 pound bag or an 18 pound bag or something, which is a big bag of fish uh, to me back then, still is. But I remember at the end of the day, my brother throwing those fish out and just throwing them in the water. And I didn't know what he was doing. And he said, we're not gonna get paid. And I remember going to that weigh-in and I think Steve Fursell, who a lot of you probably know watching this, had like a 35 pound bag and won it. And I think it took 31 pounds to get a check. I had never seen bass that big, that many of them in person. I mean, and I, I was, hooked from that time, that point on. So um, I've really been fishing tournaments since I was like 10 and really got heavily involved in it about the age of like 14, I guess. And then um, continued to bass fish, continued to bass fish and, uh, you know, tournament fish and things like that. And then I think when I was like 16, 17, my brother ended up selling his bass boat. So me and my dad still had our bass boat, but uh, like I said, my dad was not a tournament guy. And uh, I kind of fell out of bass fishing because I was at the level where all I wanted to do was compete. That's it. I, I, I mean, the bass fishing was fun, but I, I wanted to compete against other people. And uh, like I had mentioned to you guys, the, the ocean was literally in my backyard. So now I'm at, you know, I was probably, like I said, 15, 16 years old. Um, I, I, I just didn't have the drive to go bass fishing. And then my dad or you know, my brother wasn't really fishing at the time now. And my, my dad would just, you know, there were weekends he couldn't take me. And I, I finally just started saying, you know what, I want to, I'm going to go play around with the saltwater stuff. My dad's not a saltwater guy at all. So I kind of had to start from scratch. And basically a lot of you watching this throughout the country may, you know, when you go fishing from shore, you're fishing residential ponds, small lakes, park ponds, things like that. Well, where I'm born and raised, I mean, we had saltwater canals. We had dead end canals, we had fishing piers. So, you know, you, I, here I am with my bass tackle going to these canals to throw a top water lure and I'm hooking into 20 pound Jack Crevels or giant snook like you can see back here on the wall. So it was, it was both, I was catching bigger fish that fought a lot harder and it was a new thing for me. I, I was brand new, totally green to it. And I had to kind of teach myself um, how to saltwater fish, how to inshore fish. So I kind of went head over heels all in on the inshore saltwater thing. And it was just so available to me. I could literally get out of school at three o'clock and ride my bike to these canal systems and catch 70, 80 pound tarpon standing on sea walls and boat docks and things. And I kind of, like I said, I went all in on that. And then I kind of graduated to the Deerfield Beach Fishing Pier. And when that change happened, that was it. Um, it, it, it was kind of like the wild, wild west out there. And I just fell in love with the whole pier culture, how we were fishing, um, the style of fishing, the type of fish we were catching. You know, my first sailfish and my first mahi, my first dolphin I ever caught in my life were both standing on the Deerfield Pier, uh, which is crazy. I mean, we were catching giant kingfish, cobias, snook, tarpon, big jacks, giant sharks, um, 
kingfish, mackerel, bonita, everything you could think of standing on this pier. And, uh, you know, looking back at it, it's funny. I met all of my best friends fishing out there on that pier, sleeping under tarps, lighting trash can fires to stay warm in the wintertime. We'd get out of school at six, at three o'clock on a Friday and we'd be at that pier until nine o'clock Sunday night. And that's God's honest truth. Um, any of you people that are real popular, big here on YouTube, follow the channel Land Shark Fishing, Victor, me and, and he was under those tarps with me. So uh, that's kind of where we came up. And I fished out there for probably, and still fish there today, but I mean, it was probably a good four years of my life, five years of just, that's all I cared about was whatever was happening on the end of that pier. And uh, to this day, you know, my five groomsmen in my wedding, uh, I met every single one of them out there on the pier. So pretty crazy. Um, still fish the pier and fish salt water to this day, you know, very regularly. But um, a weird thing about, I don't know, I was probably 21, 20 years old. And uh, I just kind of had an itch to start bass fishing again. Now, during these pier years, I was still going bass fishing with my dad. We'd still go in the winter time when it was too rough and windy to fish the pier. We'd go and sneak into gated neighborhoods and fish the residential ponds and lakes for bass and stuff. And I still knew how to do it. I still enjoyed it, but I, I just wasn't something I wanted to spend every weekend doing. And, uh, you know, obviously if my dad asked me to go, I went with him and still enjoyed it, but it wasn't like my main interest. And then when I got to be about 20, 21 years old, it kind of just started to come back to me like, I really missed it, but I really missed the competitive aspect of it. Like I said, I wanted to go back and start fishing tournaments again. And uh, a, a kid I used to fish the uh, the Junior Anglers Club against, uh, his name is Matt Weida, a uh, good buddy of mine. He has an awesome YouTube channel on here. I believe it's Matt W. Fishing. If any of you guys want to see an awesome channel, puts out really good content, definitely check him out. Um, he had, he was kind of the same deal. He was working as a mate. Um, and still does on these big saltwater boats, but he eat, slept, breathed bass fishing. That's all he cared about was bass fishing. And uh, he had saved up and bought himself a 18 foot ranger or whatever it was. And I had still kept in contact with him through the years. And uh, I kind of asked him, do you need a new tournament partner? I'm looking to get back into it. And that's kind of what happened. I just, all of a sudden, almost overnight, just started, went head first back into bass fishing again. And literally every single weekend, me and Matt were up here at Lake Okeechobee dumping money we did not have into entry fees to fish tournaments and fishing down at Holiday Park, down in the Everglades, and fishing every a tournament almost every single weekend, it felt like. And, um, you know, competed, started doing that regularly, and I just totally fell back in love with it. Before long, I really could care less about the pier. I could care less about anything in salt water. Now I... All I wanted to do was bass fish. So me and Matt fished tournaments together for probably two years or so. And like I said, almost every weekend I was up here fishing, uh, you know, fishing tournaments. It was funny. I actually changed jobs from what I was doing to another job just to work a nine to five that I could have weekends off because I was my other job I was working at before that. Um, I had to request off for every tournament and uh, it, it just got to be too much of a pain. So I literally just quit my job, went to another job that I didn't even care. Money was an issue, nothing. I just wanted weekends off because I wanted to, I wanted to fish tournaments. So went and did that, did a job change and competed for two years with Matt, um, fishing up here on the lake and everything, like I said. And then, um, one night up here at Roland Martins Marina, I ran into my wife and, uh, she was, I believe fishing against us the next day or something. We were up there eating dinner. She was there. And, uh, started dating my wife and uh you know a lot of you I, I hinted in my videos and things but um you know meeting my wife was a huge I probably wouldn't be guiding today and where I'm at today if I didn't meet her for the simple fact that I mean she taught me a lot you know me and Matt were somewhat green to the lake um we had learned it fairly well and especially I mean it wasn't even me it was all Matt's doing he was you know, had weekdays off during the week. I was up here practicing and stuff. So he did teach me, you know, a good amount about the lake. But, you know, my wife's family, they're, they're rooted here. They've been here for, you know, a few generations. And, uh, you know, their name there was really established here on Lake Okeechobee. So once I started dating her, started fishing with her a lot more, um, I learned, you know, every, every year I learned what would take people 20 years, I feel like, to learn. I mean, just how these fish move, where they move, water clarity, um, 
how when to fish where, um, how to fish where, how just so much. I mean, more information than I could even think of right now. And uh, so it, it was a new thing for me fishing with my father in law. I mean, he's been fishing out here for 50 years. Um, you know, his grandparents were literally commercial fishermen out in the lake. So I just had this abundance of, of information being thrown at me. And uh, I, I was just able to really learn how to navigate the lake also. I mean, you guys, a lot, a lot of you just booked me just to show you the hazards in the lake. I never knew there was a pebble in this lake, let alone rock on still, until I met my wife and her family. So uh, not only did they um, teach me a lot how to catch the fish, they probably saved me a lot of money on boat repairs and stuff because I had no idea. I was up here running around, you know, by then I had, my brother had bought an old 18 foot Stratus and I was running around out here, no GPS, no nothing. And uh, so, learned a lot with that so um i don't know me and my wife were together for five years again i was up here every weekend still fishing in tournaments entering the bfls the avas the king of the glades all the two-day team turn everything you can think of i was entering again with money i didn't have just to just to compete and uh finally it came time where me and my wife were talking about getting married and we did get married and uh you know we decided to move out here she would come back from college she graduated from the west coast of florida and came back here to the town of bell glade and uh she was had a stable job she still you know works for her dad a job she's very happy with and i wasn't sure what i really what i wanted to do in life so it made sense for us to move to where she worked um because she had a stable job she was happy with and looked at staying with and i wasn't particularly happy or you know enjoying what i really did so now a time for it came time to for a career change for me and any of you that are familiar with the town of Belle Glade know there's only so many types of jobs out here. It's, it's, it's all farming, right, for the most part. If you're not a mechanic or some into some anything that has to do with farming, you're kind of SOL for the most part. And uh, neither of those interest me, and nor did I have any background in any of that. So um, I kind of started thinking about trying to start this guide service. Now, Keep in mind, I've never in my life ever wanted to be a fishing guide, nor did I dream about being a fishing guide, nor did it ever even sound interesting to me. Why well, I, I could never picture myself taking somebody else fishing. I wanted to be the one fishing. and uh, But it kind of came down to that's really the only choice I have. Um, I talked to the wife about it, and she was, you know, she said, well, we don't have kids yet. We're kind of just starting out. You know, if you're going to try it, now's the time to try it. So I started it. And uh, I just kind of put the advertisements out there, started this YouTube channel. That's the only reason. I don't, I'm not one of these YouTube people that does this to get money and get paid and try to be famous and all this. This was just another form of advertisement for me. So I started the YouTube channel, the Facebook page, just, just all standard steps. And uh, you know, I think this is gonna be my fourth year guiding. Obviously I went to school, got my captain's license, did all that. And uh, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I never, a lot of people think, you know, how did I start it? How did I get into it? What made me want to be a guide? Nothing. I, I literally was the last thing I wanted to do, but it was the only choice I had. And uh, I really fell in love with it. Um, I, I absolutely love taking people out, showing them the lake, showing them this awesome fishery that we have, showing them the birds, the, the back trails, the water. I mean, just and teaching people about Lake Okeechobee. Um, it's, there's no other lake in the entire world like this lake and you know I, I just like today you know i mean i i feel like sometimes i take for granted the fishery that we have right in my backyard i had a you know a couple guys from uh i want to say it was south southern kentucky today and a uh, guy sets the hook on a fish and i tell him oh i thought you know he looked bigger than that he ain't a real big one two and a half pounder and the guy let me know dude back home you catch three of these in a tournament and you're you're at the dock you got this thing won so you know, I, I enjoy working out on Lake Okeechobee. It's something different every single day. I meet a ton of different people. Some I like more than others, let's be honest. But, um, you know, I'm a people person. I just enjoy talking to people that come from all different walks of life, all different areas throughout the country, all different places throughout the world it's gotten to. I've got people from overseas and people I never thought I'd ever get to meet and people I never thought I, that I never would meet if it weren't for this job and it weren't for this YouTube channel and things like that. So, um, it was definitely a learning experience, you know, I mean, now I'm rolling, I'm busier than I ever thought I would be, which is the best case scenario and something, like I said, I don't take for granted, but, um, 
you know, any of you that are that ask me, how did I start? How do you start? What's the best thing? It's just you, you know, you have to love fishing. You have to, at the end of the day, you have to know how to fish. You have to know what you're doing. But you got to be very patient and you got to be a people person. I love talking to people. I'm a talker. As you can see, I'm 20 minutes in on this video of just rambling about myself. I love talking to people. I love talking to people on just about not just fishing, but everything. You know, everybody on the boat has a, has a specialty, whether it's in fishing or mechanics or farming or, um, you know, sport, technology, IT, everything. I mean, I get people from all different walks of life and it's just really cool to hear everyone's story. Um, patience, you know, I mean, everyone thinks they want to be a guide until you get the first customer that's never fished before and you're telling them to cast left and he's casting right. And that's, that's part of it. I enjoy teaching people, um, how to, how to bass fish or snook fish or, or whatever we're doing that day. So, um, really that's how I started. Um, that's kind of my backstory. I know this was kind of long and boring, but figured some people might be interested in it. And uh, I, I now it's funny. I mean, looking at it now, I I I, ne I can never see myself doing anything else ever again. I was never a person that enjoyed working for somebody, um, you know. And and I wanted to start my own business was my dream. I didn't know what it was. I never thought it would be, uh, you know, a guide service. But I'm so happy I made the jump. You know, I thank my wife, you know, constantly for believing in me and giving me the okay to. You know, try this. I mean, this could have fell flat on its face. And remember, you know, a year or two in, whatever it was I was guiding is when COVID hit. And there are a lot of guides that were very prominent on this lake that didn't make it through COVID. You know, they had to go get other jobs and this and that. I mean, times were extremely tough. And, uh, you know, I thank each and every one of you for, you know, supporting me and, and uh, you know, booking trips with me and things like that. Because uh, this isn't a guaranteed job. You know, this isn't a, you don't know your schedule. You got to be good. You got to be able to go when the person wants to go and your phone could just stop ringing like this. So um, I'm very fortunate. I'm blessed. I'm very happy about where I'm at. And like I said, I'm busier than I've ever been. So uh, hopefully any of you guys watching this, hopefully I'm still here doing the same job in the next 30, 40 years. Hopefully that's, that's the main goal. And uh, you know, you guys hear me preach and, and talk and post about the health and the longevity of Lake Okeechobee, because uh, that's what I tell people. I'm, th I'm going to be 30 but I really want to guide on this lake till I'm 130 years old. Uh, so any of you guys that are watching this that are maybe new to the channel or anything, uh, definitely like and subscribe and pick up the phone and let me come show you this awesome fishery. I'm looking at my, my Lake Okeechobee map here. Uh, let me show you this fishery that we have here. And uh, it's one of a kind. It's the only place like it in the world. You know, I, I feel like this is the only bass fishery in the world that you could be running 60 mile an hour in. And I have customers just video camera on on their phone of us weaving through the back trails and the backwater of the lake and running over alligators and all kinds of stuff i mean it's it's definitely a one-of-a-kind place so i look forward to hearing from you guys i appreciate um, appreciate you guys watching the video i appreciate you guys liking and subscribing and uh like i said i'm trying to get as much content out for you guys as i possibly can i've got a couple of videos after this one that are coming um I don't think they're by far the greatest or, you know, the biggest bags of fish I've caught, but there's something to keep you interested in. Hopefully, uh, here before too long, I'll run into a big old group of fish that I can go out and film some awesome footage on. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Hope this one didn't run too long, and I appreciate all of you guys.